Yeah. So uh, Indonesia has successfully transitioned from microscopy to molecular testing for upfront diagnosis of presumptive TB cases. More than 70% of new TB cases and also more than 95% of presumptive TB are now being diagnosed using molecular test. So in addition, financing, the financial aspect of expanding and maintaining molecular testing has been a challenge. There has a gap also between the financial needs and also the capacity to fulfill those needs. Yeah, so I, I remember in 2020, yeah, we planned to purchase TrueNet from India yeah. and then COVID-19 came and suddenly the government of India not allowed us to buy TrueNet at the time. Uh, and nowadays we try also, uh, now, now we, we try to a uh, new procurement to procure TrueNet around maybe 15, yeah, sorry, 50 machines, but it's still in the progress. We hope that in the TrueNet, because like you say that it's a simple one and battery operated. And I think those kind of machine is fit, fit, yeah, fit for our health centers that place in the remote area. So it's the lack of practical electricity and also uh, not, not sufficient infrastructure. I think this can, this true net will be the fit tools to diagnose TB in the primary healthcare. Now, Indonesia are, is among the first implementers of the new PPAL and PPAL M for six months regimen for drug resistant TB patient. With the plans to transition to wider programmatic settings by 2024. So uh, for the drug sensitive TB, NDP is also preparing to implement font four, yeah, four months regimen. We cannot find rifampentin in the global market because every country may be chasing or want to procure, but the availability is very hard to find the rifampentin. So I think this also uh, challenge, yeah, challenge for us to overcome the latent TB in the future. So I think the logistic should be uh, safe to to fight the latent TB. Welcome, friends, to yet another episode of NTB Dialogues. This is the midpoint since the governments worldwide committed to NTB by 2030. 90 months have passed by and 90 months are left to 2030. Today, we have a very special guest, a person who has been on the front lines of fighting TB in Indonesia, one of the TB high burden countries. Uh, Dr. Adam Rahan Pambudi is amongst us. He is the national TB program manager in Indonesia. So currently he is the director of communicable disease prevention and control in the Indonesia's Ministry of Health. He is a senior medical faculty of uh, Air Langa University and ASEAN Institute of Health Development Program, Mahidol University in Thailand. Dr. Imran Pambudi, can you please tell us if Indonesia is on track to NTB? Yeah, thank you. So Indonesia is still off track from achieving the post-2015 TB agenda. Our TB incidence has only declined by 10% compared to the level of 2015 by 2022. And also mortality rates have been decreased at a slow pace. And it seems that we might miss the milestones of 2020 and 2025. The negative additional challenges to our national TV program. However, I must highlight that we have made significant progress in rebounding from the ditches we faced between 2019 and 2020. 
Yes, th thank you, Dr. Imran. So can you please let us know about the active case finding? Like, has it increased? Or uh, is Indonesia screening more people uh, for TB? Has the notification gone up because the screening is more? And how is the screening happening? WHO uh, guidelines say it should be happening with molecular tests. So to what extent uh, people with presumptive TB get uh, molecular tests? Yeah, so uh, Indonesia has successfully transitioned from microscopy to molecular testing for upfront diagnosis of presumptive TB cases. More than 70% of new TB cases and also more than 95% of presumptive TB are now being diagnosed using molecular tests. So in addition, financing, the financial aspect of expanding and maintaining molecular testing has been a challenge. There has a gap also between the financial needs and also the capacity to fulfill those needs. So the condition about the, our molecular test, the primary diagnostic tools for the TB program in Indonesia is a gene expert machines. Um, nowadays, we have around 2,300 gene expert machines available in 500 for in districts in Indonesia, procurement delays and also monitoring uh, risk stock availability in the facility level. And we also, I think we also still need to cover a larger portion of primary molecular testing. As uh, now currently only uh, among uh, around 1,100 machines, gene expert, have been allocated uh, out of more than 6,700 microscopic centers. So if you want to replace yeah, the microscopic, see, so we, we still uh, have kept for that one. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Imran. It is very, uh, you know, inspiring to hear this presumptive TB cases get diagnosed using uh, or get screened using a uh, molecular test. This is a big, big uh, uh, progress. In India, we have uh, about, uh, as per the last report, in 2022, we 23% uh, of presumptive TB cases were tested using molecular tests, and uh, it's being scaled up. And the most molecular tests done in India are uh, by using TrueNet, which is uh, the WHO approved uh, point of care and decentralized uh, machine. Yeah. So I was wondering, uh, like, do do you have TrueNet because of uh, its point of care is decentralized? Uh, I have seen it working in PHC. So also. Uh, it's battery operated. Can you please elaborate on that? Thanks. Yeah. So I, I remember in 2020, uh, we planned to purchase TrueNet from India. Yeah. And then COVID-19 came. And suddenly, the government of India not allowed us to buy TrueNet at the time. Uh, and nowadays we try also uh, now now we we try to a uh, new procurement to procure through net around maybe 15 yeah eh, sorry 50 machines but it's still in the progress we hope that in the through net because like you say that it's a simple one and battery operated and i think those kind of machine is fit, fit, yeah, fit for our health centers that place in the remote area. So it's the lack of electrical, electricity, and also uh, not not sufficient infrastructure. I think this can this true net will be the fit tools to diagnose TB in the primary healthcare. Yes, thank you, thank you, Doctor Imran. Totally echo. And uh, uh, let's hope 
uh, uh, Indonesia is able to transition fully to molecular tests uh, and uh, same for other countries uh, because it's so important for, to early and accurately diagnose tuberculosis yeah. and uh, and resistance as well to, to emphasize. Uh, so Dr. Imran, coming to uh, the treatment, uh, so are we, uh, is Indonesia using uh, the 146, the one month uh, treatment for latent TB, four months for drug sensitive or six months for drug resistant, and, or, or are there plans for that as per the WHO guidelines? So just wanted to be uh, to, to get an update from you on that. Yeah. So nowadays we still use the six month regimen for drug sensitive TB. And uh, for the drug resistant TB, we still use the nine months. Now in Indonesia, our is among the first implementers of the new PPAL and PPAL M for six months regimen for drug resistant DB patient. With the plans to transition to wider programmatic settings by 2024. So uh, for the drug sensitive TB, NDP is also preparing to implement four, four, yeah, four months regimen, but still we uh, discuss with the expert because we be uh, very care proof the set effect uh, mechanism to report platform and also the responsive patient support schemes are underway. Yes, thank you, Dr. Imran. And let um, uh, and the good news is that the price of bidacolin has come down. Uh, as per the news yesterday, by 55% uh, by Johnson & Johnson and also other. So uh, a Stop TB partnership had sent out uh, news yesterday. So let us hope that the bidaculine based mm. BPAL regimen, Indonesia leads the region uh, in introducing it. And it's good, good, good news. Can you please, uh, sir, share some messages on why it is important, why collaborative activities between uh, how tobacco tuberculosis, diabetes, sector connected and bio responses is so important. Over to you. So based on our global DB report, smoking is one of the TB, what we call um, comorbidities. Yeah. I mean that if someone smoking, it's, uh, they can have a chance, more chance to, to have tuberculosis. And so that's why in Indonesia, we, we try to uh, combine, yeah, combine the approach of TB cessation and also um, Tobago, sorry, Tobago cessation and TB program. So it means that uh, we, we have a, several pilots project yeah, in several, several health uh, facilities to combine this one. And nowadays, uh, in our health information system, TB information system, we have the information about uh, whether the patient smoker or not. Yeah. And in our pilot project, if, if the TB patient is smoker, so we will uh, the health provider Either will give them consultation or advice to stop smoking. Yeah. And, and when the patient, a TB patient, the next week or this, uh, the health provider also asks whether the patient yeah, stop smoking or not. If they yeah, not stop smoking, so the what we call the special consultant, yeah, the one who can give more advice, will come to the clinic, to the TB clinic, and give him the advice about how to stop smoking. I think this is a very uh, important important things since we. Uh, we don't want to lose the chance, yeah, because usually, yeah, smokers will stop smoking if they get sick. Yeah. So when they get sick, and then we uh, give them advice at, at face to uh, stop smoking, usually it works like that one. 
Obi. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much uh, again, uh, Dr. Imran. Very, very important message from you to, uh, you know, to, to not only fight TB, but also its risk factors. So Dr. Imran, as we know, every case of active TB disease comes from latent TB. Pool, pool of latent TB. So uh, how, how much Indonesia has progressed in addressing latent TB infection or TB, prevent, TB, TB prevention? The definition under uh, TB prevention therapy are in progress. But currently, the coverage of TPT among PLHIV, children under five years old, and also household contacts still remain low. And we need innovative services delivery system stronger communication platform, and also sufficient logistics. And you also, I think, Bobby, you also aware that nowadays, global, we cannot find rifampentin in the global market because every country may be chasing or want to procure, but the availability is very hard to find the rifampentin. So I think this also a uh, challenge, yeah, challenge for us to overcome the latent TB in the future. So I think the logistic should be uh, safe yeah, to, uh, to fight the latent TB. Yes, totally uh, agree, uh, Dr. Imran. Uh, logistics and supply chain needs to be so more robust. Uh, not only the even mm. India is, uh, as per the news, is uh, currently reeling with, um, you know, TB drug shortages of uh, certain medicines in some parts, which is really alarming. We need strong logistics and support on the ground. And let us hope that happens. So, Dr. Imran, can you uh, please share some insights on, uh, based upon your experience, what can we do more in the coming 90 months so that the progress on TB uh, is, is, you know, on ending to TB rather is, uh, you know, is faster and is, is stronger. Uh, some few things you have already mentioned, for example, strong supply chain, so strong logistics, so, and so many other things, 100% molecular testing, med, uh, rollout of latest regimens. So is there anything adi in addition which you would like to highlight? Yeah, Bobby, thanks for the uh, questions here. Yeah. So I think the current, current effort is progressive enough, yeah, but may not be sufficient to meet more ambitious target. Yeah. TB control program need new tools to accelerate the TB agenda, such as uh, TB drugs, uh, shorter regimen for care and prevention, near point of care diagnosis, more sensitive yet affordable active case finding and also real time data. And also, we need accountable multi sectoral commitment and contributing platform, increasing resources for innovative interventions with innovative financing. Bottom up approach starting at the pilot level and strategies for community engagement and behavior change. And also I want to highlight about, we should also uh, fighting of stigma and discrimination because this stigma and discrimination will lead the PB patient to stop of medication. And also uh, stigma and discrimination is also make people don't want to be notificated or identified. So still many things to do, but yeah, I think we are in the correct pathway, but still need something to accelerate. Thank you, Dr. Imran. We have taken a lot of your time. Before we let you go, please, sir, we would like to hear your words. Uh, what is your call to the world leaders at the UN high-level meeting uh, on TB uh, later this month. Uh, we recognize that TB is not just a health issue, but a fact societies, economies, and overall well-being. These challenges with evidence-based strategies, you know, fatty financing, and a whole of society approach.
we reaffirm our unwavering commitment to ending TB within our borders and contributing to leader to unite in support of the UNSRM on TB. And it's a opportunity for political leaders to rate progress toward ending TB by 2030. Yes, thank you uh, so much, uh, uh, Dr. Imran. In India, as we would say, Amin, and let us hope that your words come true and uh, more power comes from the UN high-level meeting which gives a push to the global fight to NTB. So thanks a lot, Dr. Imran, again for, uh, for speaking to us. Uh, so friends uh, who have joined us late, we were speaking to Dr. Imran Pambodi, Director of Communicable Disease Prevention and Control, Indonesian Ministry of Health, in this episode of NTB Dialogues, 90 for 90 Global Voices series. He is also a senior medical faculty of Air Langa University and ASEAN Institute of Health Development Program at Mahidol University, Thailand. So thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Imran. Power to you for UNHLM and data and uh, all the best for your continued efforts uh, for strengthening TB response in Indonesia. Thanks a lot, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Bobby. See you, Thank you sir. Thank Do you again. Sir.